A few days after he won the world title, he paid more than 6,000 guineas for three yearling racehorses at Newmarket. And if one or two cynics at the fight game said they'd seen young stars come a cropper like this before, Conte ignored it. He was determined to enjoy life the way he wanted to live it, and he did. In 1975, he made his first defense of the world title against Lonnie Bennett from Los Angeles, who as a kid had been a gang leader in the streets of Chicago, had twice been shot in the legs by other tearaways, and who, when he was 16, had himself shot a man in the chest. Now at 28, he had a master's degree in physical education and was working as a youth counselor in Watts, the race riot suburb of Los Angeles. When he faced Conte at Wembley, he'd been beaten only twice. Let's see it from the start. And this could be just about the most dangerous moment Conte's ever faced in his life, because this man, Lonnie Bennett, billed as the North American light heavyweight champion, certainly has danger in those fists. Magic man on the right leg of his trunks. Magic man because it said he makes opponents disappear. They either don't want to know about him, or if they get in the ring with him, they find themselves quickly on the floor. He has a destructive record, Bennett, and he's certainly going to test Conte tonight. But Conte looking trim, slim, and full of confidence. Cool, and looking not in the slightest perturbed. Conte 12, stone 6, and Bennett 12, 4 and a half. Bennett, the American, has got uh, about 2 inches in height advantage. He's 6 foot 2. Speed of punch there from Bennett. Quick jab, like a snake's tongue darting out. Bennett got height and reach advantage, but he's older. 28. Conti is 23. whirlwind start by either of them. Respect on both sides. Conti should be the better mover of the two. Bennett repeating that left jab that he showed so much of in training, and which looks so good in training. He's picking up points with it. probably stolen this first round for Bennett. He takes those on his gloves. So Conte took his time, didn't really show very much, and had to take a few jabs in the face, which were fast enough to get through his guard. So it looks as though Bennett has probably shaded the opening round. Lonnie Bennett, 28, from Los Angeles. That left jab is flicking out with a lot of competence. Well, his one weak spot, of course, that we know about is the left eyebrow, which was cut by Tom Bathia in one of the two fights that he's lost in his professional career. That was done in 1972. And in sparring at the Thomas A. Beckett Gym in London, Billy Knight of Britain, who was sparring with him, reopened the old cut in the corner of the left eyebrow. So Conte, by my card now, has fallen behind on the first two rounds. authority to that left hand of Bennett's. Conte doesn't seem to uh, be able to cope with it yet. He's having to take it. Whether he wants to take it is another matter.
Jack Jabbert, but it's has dominated these opening three rounds. There's no question of that. And every time it lands, it makes it that much harder for Conte to come back. The first attack right on the closing bell. So that was the first real opening up, and he gets a pat from George Francis, his manager. First time he tried to open up. And in fact, he's caused trouble because in Bennett's corner, they're working on the left eye. That's the eye that opened up in training. It's the one that Tom Bethea injured two and a half years ago. And Eddie Futch is having to work on it now. The first sign of trouble for Bennett. So now 10,000 people at Wembley have seen the first big attack from Conte. And they're looking for more. beginning to find him with lefts and rights now. Conti has stepped up his own pace and immediately it's proved successful. But it's still reaching him with the left. Like that. Came over, which is just as well. Still that long left arm finding its way into the face of the champion Conte. And carrying, I think, quite a bit of weight. Conte beginning to warm up trying to find a rhythm to put the punches together. Bennett beginning to breathe a little harder. This is being fought at a fast pace, and a lot of punches being exchanged. Stamina is going to play its part in this. Still Conte being out-jabbed. definitely wobbled under a left hook. That's a really good attack there by Conte. The authority of a champion about that. He needed something like that. And just as he did in the third, he left it to near the end of the round and then he put it together. And he stamped his authority onto the fight like this. The first left hook wobbled Bennett. Look at him going back and his legs went for a moment. And Conti wasn't slow to follow up. Like a tiger, he was on him. And right to the closing bell, he gave Bennett a lot of trouble. And that's the first round that Conti has clearly won. They're still working on Bennett's eye in the other corner. Second goal, round five. So what a fight this could prove to be. So maybe the magic man, the big puncher from America, like so many big punches, he might just be vulnerable to the big punch himself. But it's right eye, which was swollen a little before, is looking worse. So he's cut over the left, and he's swollen under the right. And Bennett's boxing showing a few signs of coming apart at the seams when Conti puts pressure on. And now Bennett's left eye bleeding quite copiously. That's a bad eye, and it's bleeding badly. Bennett's had real trouble now. 
He's in really bad trouble. His face is screwed up in agony and anxiety and worry. He's got a really shocking eye. And John Conti's going to have a look at it. And Bennett doesn't want to go on with that eye, and I can't say I'm surprised. It's a shocking cut. And Eddie Futch is looking at it and shaking his head, and it's all over. And Conti has defended the World Light Heavyweight title, stopping Bennett in the fifth round covered in Bennett's own blood and when he opened up it really was all over because he took the man apart he found the old injury he opened it up and from that moment Bennett didn't have any further chance and Bennett didn't want to go on either in my view that was Conte at his peak from that moment things began to go wrong he rowed and fell out with his manager he broke his right hand in a fight in America, and it never did heal properly. And although he made two more successful defences, he took bad advice and refused to go to Monte Carlo in 1977 to defend the title, saying the price wasn't right. Suddenly, he was stripped of his title. The very thing that guaranteed him fame and fortune was taken from him, and he never got it back. And from now on, the publicity was lurid and self-defeating. The cynics were right after all. I prefer to remember John Conti as the golden boy, which he was. And next week, we'll look at an earlier golden boy of British boxing, Billy Walker. Goodbye.